Thank you, Mr. Zimbillis. How can I help you? Yes, ma'am. Can I have two pounds of boudin cut, please? Anything else for you? That's it. All right, go ahead and drive around, man. Thank you. If you've ever driven through Southwest Louisiana on Interstate 10, you've probably noticed a lot of billboards saying, exit now for Boudin Cracklins. These specialty meat products are part of Louisiana's unique foodways and can be found throughout this area known as Acadiana. From gas stations and drive through windows to butcher shops and restaurants, the places serving these delicacies have become popular destinations for locals and tourists alike. Boudin cracklins are eaten throughout the day for any meal, and literally millions of pounds of these popular Cajun foods are served locally and shipped across the country every year. In Acadiana, butcher shops carry all the traditional cuts of meat, as well as traditional boudin cracklins but many offer their own specialty creations like deep fried boudin balls and pepper jack cheese boudin egg rolls. We ship out a lot of cracklings and a lot of boudin, stuff in deboned chickens and turkeys, uh, stuffed pork chops, various sausages, alligator meat, you name it, we ship it. I started in 93 in Karen Crow on the corner of Highway 726. Uh, we've been in business 27 years here in the Scott and Karen Crow area. We sell more boudin in Scott, Louisiana than any other city in Louisiana. These specialty pork items are considered traditional foods in Cajun country. Before refrigeration in grocery stores, families process their own animals. In the Cajun French language, this is known as a boucherie. Families, friends, and neighbors would gather to slaughter a farm-raised pig to preserve and distribute the meat in the form of sausages, bacon, and tasso, which is a small lean cut of sun-dried or smoked pork. The old Cajuns, they would have a good time. They would cook, clean the pigs. They learn how to do it in the old, old days without any refrigeration and stuff. Really. It was hard. It had to be cold because if it was, if it got warmer, that, that meat was gonna get, it was gonna sour pretty quick. A lot of these people were subsistence farmers. They were just living off the land. A lot of prairie people raising the animals. You took and you made what you could with your animals as best you could, you know, and as, as good as you could, obviously, but as efficiently as possible. Nothing was wasted, and the leftover parts were used to feed the people gathered to help with the slaughter. This became kind of a tradition of just rotating neighbor to neighbor and creating what you could out of these foods, right? You got all this meat, you got casing, you've got all these things. So a lot of these items were created just out of availability. The stomach was stuffed like a sausage to make ponce boudé or chaudin. The skin was scrubbed, diced, and fried to make cracklins. The intestines were cleaned and stuffed with rice and ground organ meat to make boudé and so on. So you've got a generational change, even though that might not be, it might not be that same communal way of living, that same necessity creating the product. But nonetheless, nine times out of 10, if you were going to an event or you were going to meet people or everybody's getting together on Saturday morning or whatever, somebody brought boudin. So it's nice to finally be able to go out and get it, not have to wait to the, the boucherie, you know, next Saturday or whatever. You could just go out and get you a link of boudin. I started seeing it in the store, I believe, in the, in the 60s. So the slaughterhouse started, and then after we got it going real good, well, everybody got on the bandwagon. <laughs> yeah, well, we had a, we had a wood-burning stove, and then we, we were getting rich. <laughs> we didn't have always live in the dark. <laughs> There's no dial or nothing. It's a box with a fire in it. Can you imagine how hard that is? Hang four or five hundred pounds of meat in there. You know, you've got to know what you're doing because it's going to sour, it's going to spoil. Well, you cause my brother to lose his mind. What was once a subsistence food made out of necessity has become synonymous with Cajun culture and reached worldwide fame. 
Due to the high demand of these specialty meat products, the industry has seen a shift towards wholesaling products in large stores, even franchising store locations across the region. However, there are still family-run businesses that prepare products in similar ways to how they originated. What was once an act of necessity is now a multi-million dollar business. What was once done by families and neighbors is now done by managers and employees. And although the Bushiri has been replaced by the drive-through window, the traditions continue. <laughs>